Well, isn't that life? This was going to be my front track tire, but I had a nail in it, and it leaks. Yay. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. This right here is my 2014 Mustang and right now I'm getting ready to go to the track going out to Thunder Hill West here in a week. Uh, so I gotta hurry up and get this thing done. So one of the problems I've been having with this car on autocross, if anything, I haven't taken to the track yet, but when I hit the brakes, I cannot lock up the brakes. No matter how hard I try, I've tried it on concrete, I've tried it on asphalt, won't lock up the brakes. So stock brakes, not good enough for what I need. So I'm gonna be upgrading the brakes today. Now, as you can see on my car, I already got Brembo's in the front, so I got the four pistons in the front. The back is just a regular old, you know, one piston, single pot brake. But right now with the stock brakes, they're not doing what I needed to do. So I got myself some power stop rotors and some Hawk pads. Um, these are supposed to be pretty good. These are the little 5.0 street pads. It's not quite good enough for the track, but I, this is a street car, so I am gonna be driving it more on the street than I will on the track. And for autocross days, it shouldn't be too bad because you know passes are only like 30 to 40 seconds so one thing that i am going to upgrade today is the brake fluid now if you take a look in there it's pretty dirty um i haven't changed it out since i got the car which i've had it about a year so that's my bad but it's going to get upgraded today right now it's probably the stock dot three which i don't know what it, yeah dot three it says right there uh, i'm going to be changing it to dot four brake fluid so basically the difference between dot three and dot four brake fluid is that dot four boils at a higher temperature. So since I'm gonna be taking this out on the track and doing like autocross and things like that, I want a brake fluid that will boil a little bit higher. That way I don't get air in my lines and then I start to lose my brakes, which is not good. When you're on the track and you're going fast, you wanna stop. All right, so this is the old rotor off of the Mustang. And this right here, that's the new rotor that's going on there. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of slots and there's a bunch of holes drilled in there. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of drilled rotors. I do think they look nice, but they do have a tendency to crack. Once they start to get hot, they'll, you'll get little cracks going along here. Not my favorite thing in the world, but let's see how long these last. These were, you know, highly recommended by many people. So let's see if they last a while. Now, the reason for going with slotted and drilled rotors, uh, if some people don't know, is that these have an ability to cool down the brakes a little bit better. So when you're on the track, or doing some hard braking all the time, you won't lose brake effectiveness because they won't get as hot. Now, what these are supposed to do is they're gonna get rid of all of the gases and the heat that the brakes are gonna make when you clamp, when the, you hit the brakes, the two pads are gonna clamp on the rotor and it's gonna get hot. So with all the little dimples and all the holes, all it does is air blows through there and helps keep it cool while you're driving around. That way when you're on the track, you don't lose brake pressure. Now, since I'm already in here, uh, there's the brake caliper, you know, Remember, always hang them up. Don't let them hang by the brake line because, you know, rubber lines can break. But that'll be changing here in a sec. Um, since I'm in here and I got everything off, I'm going to go ahead and change the hubs. Uh, this thing has 105,000 miles on it. I don't know when they've been changed. So while I'm already in here, brake hubs are cheap. It was like 50 bucks a side. So I'm going to go ahead and change those out. Something simple, you know, a little bit of maintenance to help make me feel a little bit better. See? These things are a piece of cake, you know? Take the cap off, take the nut off, slides right off. Hub is off. Look how easy that is. Fords are easy to work on. I don't see why some people complain. Way easier than that broken BMW <laughs> thing right there. See that engine right there? That thing right there? Yeah, it's broken. That's why you haven't seen the Beamer in quite a while. So I gotta fix that thing one of these days, hopefully sometime soon. But you know how things go. I got new stuff new stuff that still works so I'm gonna play with this and then when I get to free time I'll do that look at that looking pretty remember new brake rotors are shipped with stuff on them so you got to spray it with some brake clean get it off you know that way it doesn't contaminate your new brake pads that you just spent a whole bunch of money on all right so I got this side all put together uh, I got obviously three more sides to do but I kind of wanted to look at these brake pads and honestly like, they're still fairly new, but visually, I can't really see what the difference is. I know it's a different compound, so this one's probably grabs a little bit better than that one, but, you know, 
I can't tell. Once I get it all together, I'll go for a drive and I'll see how much better these things break. Uh, what I should have done, honestly, is probably take this thing for a drive and there is actually in the computer a brake performance test. I tried to do the test, but I couldn't find any place that was flat that I could do the test on, honestly, um, because it's either 60 to zero or 100 to zero, and most of the places where I could slam on the brakes, I, I can't find a flat area around here. There's probably a bunch, I just didn't see any while I'm driving around. One of these days I'll have to go out and I'll see what this thing can do once I'm done with everything. All right, so I got both front ones on, as you can see. Not too hard to do. Um, got the new hubs on there. I do need to go do the back real quick. Once those are done, then I'm gonna have to flush the brake system out and then I can go for a test drive. All right, so there's a couple things that I've run into the car that don't really like the history of it, I guess. Um, if you look here, there's a little clip. That means that right there, that's the factory rear rotor that this thing came with. Now, saying that, my brake pads, oh, my brake pads look new. Or at least they still have a fair amount of meat left on them. Which means that somebody has never replaced these rotors, they've just done some pad slaps on here. I don't like pad slaps. And the reason for that is we can take a look at the rotor on the other side. That's the rotor on the other side. I don't know how well you can see in the video, but it's there's more there's more ridges on this thing than I don't know. Like it it is supposed to be flat and smooth. This has mountains. It is it's quite bad. Yeah, like here, let me where's the uh, where's the other brake pads? Oh, huh. okay. I don't know where I put the other brake pads, but there were horrendous. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Okay, all right, I found it as soon as I turned off the thing, or my camera, so you guys can see, there's the brake pad, that is not smooth at all. Like, it fits in the little ridges there. I don't know if this is the inside or outside, but it shouldn't be like that. They should be flat, I guess, in a way, with the ridges, I don't know. Maybe I get more performance out of them because I have ridges. More surface area, see, better brakes. No, don't do this. If you ever do brakes, either replace the rotor or have them turned. So there's another thing I don't really like about newer cars is that they have the parking brake built into the caliper. Um, on some of like the older pickups, they'll have the it's like shoes on the inside and they have brake pads on the outside. The shoes on the inside of the rotor. Well, here, let me. This isn't the same style, but you'd get the idea. This is where, right there. There'd be some shoes on the inside that would go out and that would be their parking brake. And then they would have the regular parking brake that would, or the regular brakes that would clamp on the outside with your caliper. But these ones and all the new cars, they have this new style where it's built in. So you can't just push the piston back in. You have to actually have a special tool, which is that one right there, that you gotta twist that thing in. So I liked it better when I can just push them in. It was a little bit easier, but I guess this isn't that bad because I don't have to deal with brake shoes on the inside of drums. All right, so I got the tool on there so you guys can see what's going on. Maybe if I can get a little bit of light in there. But as I turn this, you can see it spins a little piston in the caliper and it just turns it back into the cal... Uh, spins the piston. I guess I don't really don't need that part anymore. There we go. So you can see it spins it in. Once I get it all the way back in there, then I'll be able to put new brake pads in. All right, so I got the brakes changed out and all I got left to do is finish changing the lines out and go ahead and flush the system. Once I do that, I'll be able to go for a test drive and drive this thing around, see what it's like. You know, even with stock wheels on here, they look pretty good. Yeah, I like it. So it's the middle of the night, I got the car done and the rear brakes are sticking. So my brilliant idea is I'm gonna take the wheels off and then take the calipers off and try pushing the pistons back in. Hopefully that works, but 
I don't know. Let's I find out. All right. So to later on now, next day, and I got my brakes figured out. Had some time constraints, so I didn't actually get to do the brake flush and the lines until the next day. Car drove around okay for a day, and then I did the brake flush and I did the lines, as I just said, obviously. And everything seems to be working all right. And then I go out and I try to drive it, and my car, the brakes, the rear brakes seem to be locked up. So, like, I could drive it a couple feet and the car would stop by itself, which is not what I wanted. This is not an electric car, it should not stop by itself. So I ended up adjusting the parking brake. Seems to be working all right now. They were getting a little bit warm. I had to drive it around a bit. I think once the pads kind of wore a little bit, everything was fine. It doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. Now I was able to actually take it for a test drive once everything was fixed. Um, these brakes grab pretty hard. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is they squeak just a little bit. Ooh. You. And it, it really doesn't bother me too much. It is a little bit of an annoyance. It doesn't squeak all the time. It seems to squeak only when it's cold or like my first stop. Um, occasionally it does squeak a little bit more. Depends on like how much I'm breaking. All right, got the Mustang all done. Uh, next time you see me, I will be going out to Thunder Hill West. Uh, I will be driving this thing around the track for the first time, which is going to be pretty fun and you guys won't want to miss out. So if you like what you saw today, smash the thumbs up button. And if you want to see what's going to happen next, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next video. You don't have to film anymore. It's so dark. <laughs>